voor die troon almachtig is. Zing mee met Wil Jaap, wij staan. Wij staan voor u troon almachtig God. En wij willen. Welkom hier bij Eefs Evangelium, de gemeente De Deur. En uh, blij dat je hier weer bent. En ook voor de mensen die online meekijken. Gaaf dat je zo online bent. Dat je geabonneerd bent en dat je weer met ons meekijkt. Amen. Ik, ga, ik geloof dat God gaat spreken tot onze levens heen. Ik geloof dat je open je hart voor Gods woord. U bent mijn rots en geeft mijn leven waarde. Strek je handen uit. U bent mijn rots. U bent mijn rots, geef mijn leven waarde. U bent mijn kracht en mijn God. U bent mijn hoop, geef mijn inspiratie. U bent lang voor de mensen. Geloof deze avond. Hello. 
in Kredelen om God te loven en te prijzen en te danken voor wat hij is en wat hij allemaal gaat doen deze ochtend. En, uh, nogmaals, open je hart voor Gods woord. Laten we zingen met veel lijnen. 10.000 redenen. De zon. de zon komt op, maak de morgen waken. Mijn dag begint met een lied voor u. Heer, wat er ook gebeurt en wat mij mag overkomen. Laat mij nog zingen als de Loop de Heer, oh mijn ziel, oh mijn ziel, hij is nu zijn heilige naam. Met meer passie, met meer passie naar ons, oh mijn ziel, de Heer is zijn heilige naam. Heer, voor geduld toont. Voor God loven en prijs deze avond. Amen. Nogmaals, welkom allemaal. Welkom bij de Gene gemeente Deur. We gaan nu over tot de gebedsverlangens. En uh, we hebben een gebedsverlangen van uh, Christel. En Christel bidt voor haar dochter Marjolein. Uh, en ze zegt dat ze verkouden is. En ze zal getest worden uh, op corona. En uh, ze krijgt pas dinsdag de uitslag daarvan. Dus we gaan bidden. En dat ze een goede uitslag zal krijgen. En dat alles goed gaat komen. Amen. En ook wil ik bidden voor deze dienst. Amen. Dat God gaat spreken tot onze levens. Amen. We hebben hier een gastprediker. Uh, deze ochtend evangelist Johanna. Amen. Dat zal beloven. En zal een krachtige tijd beloven. Dus nogmaals. Laten we God loven en prijzen en dan gaan we bidden. Halleluja, rabba baba yandusi, halleluja. Oh, rabba baba yandusi, halleluja. Ik dank u, vader God, halleluja. O oh, machtige vader in de hemel, ik loof en ik prijs u, machtige naam. O, oh, ik bid u, vader, heer, voor mij, uw lijn, heer, halleluja. O, oh, vader, dat ze een positieve uitslag zal krijgen, vader, heer. O, oh, vader, ik bid u dat u haar zal aanraken op dit moment, vader, heer. En dat zij getuigenis zal zijn, vader, heer. Dat ze uh, tot barel en bekering zal komen, vader, heer. Dat, u, dat zij een levende getuigenis zal zijn. O, oh, vader, wil ik bidden, ook, vader, voor deze dienst. Dat uh, elke hart geopend mag worden voor uw woord, halleluja. O, oh, vader, dat u mag spreken en delen tot onze harten. 
dat hij op een boven natuurlijke manier een wonder gaat verrichten. En dat hij zal spreken tot evangelist Johanna. Zal de lippen van de, de evangelist Johanna in Jezus machtige naam van God wordt gezegd. Amen. En dan hebben we nog een mededeling. Uh, dat is één daarvan. En dat is dat we morgenavond uh, hebben een discipelschap uh, training. U mag even plaats zitten. Plaats nemen, amen. En we hebben een discipelschap, dus als je een man bent deze ochtend en je bent benieuwd wat een discipelschap inhoudt, uh, adres daarvan is uh, de burgemeester Matsensingel, uh, 200 in Arnhem. Dus nogmaals, ben je een man deze ochtend en je bent benieuwd wat zo'n discipelschap training inhoudt, uh, Pasen verplakt en de Pasen verteer is de voorganger van de hele Arnhemkerk, die zal er gaan preken en het leeft een prachtige tijd te worden. Dus morgen... Avond om half acht een discipelschap in dat blokje. We hebben nu tijd voor de collecte. De collecte van de financiële bijstand. We hebben tot slot nog een vraag te stellen. En een tijdje op de tafel kan ik mensen gaan komen die een vraag hebben over wat de laatste financiële maanden mee zijn gekomen. En de eerste gaat over de mensen die niet kunnen zijn maar vandaag de kerk komen. Die moeten vandaag de kerk komen. En de vraag die ik wil stellen is dat ik wil jullie naar achteren. Johanna, een krachtig applaus als hij naar voren komt. Everyone at home, I want to welcome you. We're going to believe that despite you're at home, in your living room, wherever you are, we're going to believe that God is going to touch you in a powerful way and He can do something in your personal life. 
If you have your Bible with you, we're going to read 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Paul speaks. But before we're going to do that with the sermon, I want to show you a video clip. I'm going to challenge you to watch this closely. This is about a great bird, the eagle. And the, the, the purpose is that you're going to look at this because this is the image I'm going to use. So let us look at this video clip. Uh, we're going to see it on the screen. That they can never goes. see coming. The bald headed eagle. Watching this video clip, it made a lot of impression. I thought it was such a tough bird. It was great how he actually sees his prey from far away and he dives and with his claws, he pulls this fish out of the water. And you know, when I was thinking about that, I think, wow, God is so great and powerful that how we can do this. this this bird he created it by God and this morning I want to preach I've titled it the necessity of rejuvenation because not a while a time ago I was I heard a story about an eagle and the thing I'm gonna say now don't go it. It's not scientific proven. I've done my uh, homework, so don't worry. Don't go it because it's nice scientifically proved. But it was such a great story that I want to use it because I, I'm going to believe that God is going to help us with it. So in the Bible, we see all these stories, bur uh, 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 animals, birds that God has uh, created to teach us lessons. And if I can uh, recommend you something, if God speaks about these things, then we're going to take it seriously. It's so about the eagle. There's so many stories and many scriptures in the Bible. We're going to read a couple of these uh, scriptures. And I know f for sure that you have heard a, ser a sermon about an eagle. I've heard a lot about uh, about an eagle, how it functions, but this story I've never heard before, so that's why I'm going to use it. The story goes as following, uh, an, an eagle can become 70 years old, and halfway through his life, 30, 35 years old, it makes, uh, it makes the decision to start a renewal process. So what it does, he flies to a very high rock and he isolates himself for a couple of months. And once he's there in the, in the mountain, he starts uh, remoting his... Uh, his, he starts hitting his beak against the rocks, and then he starts, and then he starts pulling out his nails all one by one. And then over time, new nails start to grow. And when he's done with that, uh, he starts pulling out his feathers. And then after a certain time, new feathers start to grow. And the reason why he does that 
is because of he realizes, do I want to come further in my life? Do I want to live for a longer time? And it is very important that I go through this renewing process in my personal life. That's the image I want you to grasp this morning. Again, it's not scientifically uh, proven, but this image is very important this morning that we grasp that. That process of this eagle, it takes five to six months. And after these months, he can fly away full power and passion. And he can go along with his personal, with his life, and he can pray again, and he can take care of himself. When I was uh, reading this story, it made me think of, of our own lives as Christians. So we all, we want to go come further in life. Maybe for years you have uh, you have been saved for many years. Maybe uh, you have recently been saved, but we come all on the point in our life that we need a renewal and renewing uh, process in our life. Because it feels like our life, we cannot look sharp anymore, or the standpoints we used to have are not there anymore in our lives. And then that's the time that we need to be honest with ourselves and say, okay, when there needs to be a renewing process, a rejuvenation process. I need to look at my principles again, the things I was, uh, my standpoints I had, I need to sharpen them because otherwise I don't make it. Firstly, I want to look at our current state. So in Holland, if you have a car, you know how it works. If you have a car, they need an AP, yeah, AP key inspection. Oh, people, when they think about that, they have they panic because they know uh, it's gonna cost some money. So back in the days, I had these cars. If you if you drive in them, you can see the bottom of the car. I uh, borrowed my car to someone, and he was riding on the car, and he went through a threshold, and eventually. <laughs> Essentially, he went at the back of the car seat, the window was dropping down. And those are the cars I had. And, uh, happily, God has blessed us past years. We, now it's different, but one thing is certain. Every time I had to do that AP key inspection for my car, I had stomach aches. And I always had such a wash list that I had to replace and it's repair, and I was trying my best. I had to go to a uh, technician who could help me. They try their best, and then I go back, and that list goes on and on. At the time, I thought by myself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up, just gonna, um, I'm gonna get a new car. And some of us, we have a trauma by this. I don't hope you have a trauma but that's the story, um, but that's the thing we experience. And you know that APK, APK K inspection, is there's a reason for that. It's for safety for us, but also the safety for others who are on the street, and this is very important. It's not a nice process for some people, but it's something that is extremely important in the lives of people. We all, in our lives, from time to time, there needs to be an APK inspection. Because we look at our lives, we look at our situation, we look at the thing we, we how we act. Is it still in line with the, li with the word of God? Because that's our responsibility. We need to take that seriously. All the things in life. Is, uh, it can, uh, is, so it's important we stand still and we balance our life. And if, we, if we're talking about cars, we need to, uh, the, the, the filters, the, the wheels, we need to make sure everything is okay or it needs to be replaced. 
And this is also for our faith. So let us read our scripture. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. And here is Paul, and he says these words. He says, examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? So here is Paul. He says very clearly, so examine yourself, test yourself, and make sure you're still in faith, yes or no. And this morning, it's so important that we are very strict for ourselves. But you know what the problem is for us as people? So we can be very strict against other people who are wrong, but if we are, if we when are wrong, then we can make it up. We try to uh, make it up for ourselves. And we're afraid to uh, examine ourselves and say, stop with self-pity, stop with looking at other things, but focus on, you, on Jesus, do the thing you have to do. The question is, where are you this morning? How was it with the inner person in you? And this question, you can only answer that. Nobody can answer that for you. Only you know the situation and the condition of your heart. And that's important that we look at that. And you know what it is? In our in intimacy, when we're by ourselves, when there's no one around us, that's the place where our true self will appear. And the question is, when you're alone, when there's no one, no brother, no sister, no pastor, no one is around you, how do you respond? How do you think? What are the things you're involved in? Very important to think about. Everything in life needs a pause uh, in, in a renewing process that we say and look at ourselves in this time of Corona we hear so many people saying now we finally have the time to talk we, we finally had the time to spend time with our friends or with family with children life is stand still Corona time you drive in a car and it stands still. And the question is, are you willing to look at your own self? Are you, are you able to look at the inside, what's, what's, what's happening in your inner self? So what I said, a car, if you look at a car, after some time, uh, uh, kilometers, he needs to uh, he needs to be repaired, and some parts need to be replaced. That's also in our personal life. And Psalms 135. So here's David. It says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord." O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mind with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's the thing that God wants to do. So, but here's David. He is willing to speak against his own soul. And that's the thing. He, he makes sure he... And the reason why he's like that is because he needs to renew his, his spirit. And we need to renew our relationship with God. Especially when we're walking a little bit crooked. And maybe we feel heavy or tired, like we can't fly anymore. And the decision we need to make, we can't look clear. 
Sometimes we're in this situation. And we don't know what what a uh, decision we need to make. And that's a very Christian moment in our lives. Because we can say, I'm going, I'm going further, I'm going further in my life. I had a, I, I bought a car with our last money and I had to drive from Zutemir to Harderweg. Harderweg to work and that's a very far there's a very far route which is very busy and it was a very nice car Citroen station white car someone has a Citroen here and I can uh, remember it, uh, there was a light light appearing and I thought no I need to go to my job but I, I, I just pretended that I didn't see it. But I saw the light flashing in my face. But I, I just didn't stop. And you know, if you don't stop at one moment, then you don't have a decision anymore. Then the car stops by itself. And that's what happened. And the rest of the story, we don't, you don't have to know. That's uh, in the past. I'm going to tell you that that's also in life. So sometimes we see these red lights and we just go on. There are all these signals there. Hey, we need to uh, repair something. Their lights are not just there for, for nothing. They're there to warn us. The signals we get in life is the same thing. It's not there for nothing. God speaks for, on our lives and it touches us someone comes and gives you a word or says something and, and it touches you and you get a conviction but you know you need to make decisions you need to make a decision you need to stop the thing you were doing or you need to do something different but you stop you don't stop with that you, you close your eyes you do something like there's nothing there and in one moment then the car stops the, your life stops and it's so important that we think about this and I believe that this is the place where a lot of Christians they bat, they lose the battle a lot of Christians these uh, leaders ministers they can lose the battle if we simply do the thing like there's nothing there pretend like nothing is there every life is can be uh, can fall apart and we need are, are, we need to be examined I have a very nice car I like to talk about cars it's not the thing that lives in my heart but and when I have this car when I step in the car and I don't uh, put my seatbelt on then it starts beeping maybe you have a car like that and it's beep 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 Sometimes I'm busy with the radio, and then I don't do it. And you know what happens? Then it starts beeping harder, and it's so annoying that I have to do it. I need to put on a seatbelt. And in some people's life, that sound is so loud. Maybe you're here or you're watching and that sound is so loud in your life but you you close your you close yourself off you close your eyes and you go on you don't realize that you have to do something safety repair and I believe there are some reasons why People don't respond. The first reason is because of pride. I say, hey, we don't want to. We don't want to acknowledge that something is wrong in our life. In English, you say it's okay not to be okay. Right? It's okay. And we're all in the same boat. 
Everyone, we're all in the same boat. We don't have to be ashamed. And that's not okay in our lives. We don't have to be ashamed about that. And you know why? Because of someone who is extremely okay, and that's Jesus Christ. He has everything under control. He knows what he does. And if we, if we simply uh, submit our lives in his life, you will, you will see that he will guide you and help you. Other reason why they don't listen, because they underestimate the necessity of the rejuvenation process of the renewing process, the replacement process. Uh, it's not necess necessary. I have everything under control. I'm not like that person. I'm strong. I can do this. And we need to listen to the signals. And lastly, I want to look at the distraction. That's the reason. that we say, oh, we have, we're so busy. I don't have time to invest in this. I've thought about it like this and eventually I, I get stuck. Our most valuable asset we have is not your car, not your house, it's not your career. The most valuable possession you have is your soul. And that's where you need to invest in. You need to make sure that that's okay. And you need to make sure there's a maintenance process. Secondly, I want to look at the price of the rejuvenation process. I want to look back at the story of the eagle. So in the story, he realizes after a time, I need to have a maintenance process. And the maintenance, what the eagle does, is not an easy process. It's a very painful situation where he needs to put himself in. It's very difficult. And still, he chooses for that. And still, he makes sure that he realizes it's necessary. He needs to do this. So sometimes in our life, it's, 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 we get stuck on our, on our road. I'm not sure which way to go. I don't know. I don't know what what decision to make. I tried this, but it makes it feels like it doesn't work. God, I pray, I seek you, but it feels like you're not there. I don't get any answers. And these are real situations in our personal life from time to time. And the question is. When we are in this situation, what kind of decisions we make? What decisions are we going to make? With the eagle, we see that he renews three parts of his life. And renewing with his beak, renewing of, uh, of his nails and his feathers. And if you look at the renewing of a beak, with that beak, how sharp the beak is, the better he can eat. And, this is deal, what and that's the image I want to use. We need to eat healthy. And I mean by that, spiritually. I'm not going to interfere with what you eat at home. I'm not going to interfere with that. But spiritually, it's important. What is the, the food you take if you uh, compare an eagle with an, an other bird, uh, it's a vulture. So a vulture eats the leftovers of um, so okay. So a vulture only eats food from the things that is left by others, but an eagle it catches its own food. But the question is. How what, how is it with you? Do you depend on what others have caught for you? Or do you have that relationship with God that God can truly, that God can spiritually feed you? I'm not talking about the role of the pastor, but the pastor needs to uh, preach. But we are also responsible for the thing we take, uh, to, uh, we take, we eat. We are uh, responsible that we feed ourselves. 
Another thing of the eagle are the nails. We saw that that he had great claws and he took that fish and that big fish he took it with him and this gives us our, an image of a vision how do we grasp the thing that is that is just in this world that the way we fight for the thing that's important the thing we fight the thing we take towards us you know what if you're not sharp you won't grasp the food you need for your spiritual life we need to be sharp thirdly the feathers and research says that there are around 7,000 feathers which weighs around six, 600 grams but they are very strong these feathers they are not just a decoration they are indispensable for flying to keep warm or for the eagle to uh, make sure that he's cool from time to time and to make sure he's in top condition so the so the bird needs to make sure that he's in top condition to remain healthy and strong and after a while he's not as sharp anymore he can't fly like this anymore so why he's do so what he does he starts the process to replace his feathers and this is something we need to understand this morning sometimes we need to renew things in our life it doesn't work well anymore you were reading your Bible this way maybe one time a chapter and then but sometimes we need to make sure we progress in this your prayer life is not like what it used to be. It's, it stops. I need to make sure you do something about it. Your speaking in tongues is still the same. Shampoo, shampoo, shampoo. There's no growth. There's no change. I'm not trying to uh, embarrass people, but this is where it's about. There needs to be some kind of growth. There needs to be a replacement, something needs to happen. If nothing happens, we need to work and fight that something happens. Why? Because that's the thing that God wants. That's the thing God wants to do in our lives. You know, when you're all by yourself with God in intimacy, asking about the things that need to be changed in your personal life, what are the things that you need to renew? Or, or are you not... Or are you afraid to ask him? Are you afraid that God's going, going to uh, reveal you things that you don't want to replace or you don't want to let go of? It's so important that we need to be honest with God. When we see signals in our life that we deal with this, that we say, okay, I need to, I need to be changed. So my wife and I, 32 years ago, we gave our lives to Christ. I'm going to tell you, life wasn't always the same. There was a moment in my life that my motor was stuck, if I can say it like that. And that I had a renewing. And I said, God, and that process I went through, wasn't easy, but I set everything aside and went forward and said, God, do it again. I gave my life. I opened my heart again with, to God. I said, God, do it again in my life. And it was, I was able, it was like that eagle. And it's hard when people, they look up to you and say, oh, that man, he can speak, he can preach, he can do that. And I come a, little, a moment and you, you're you're stripped just like that eagle no beak no feathers no nails and you're naked as as 
without nothing. And that was the process. It was a humiliating process, but it was necessary. And it changed my life. It brought me new life in my personal life and spiritual life. And I'm not saying that you need to go through the same process. But the question is, are you prepared to do the thing that it's necessary so that you can go further? Are you prepared to do that? The eagle, if you look at that, is a, is a tough bird. But it was stripped. Can you imagine if you close your eyes? You see the eagle? Bold? Have you have seen a bold chicken before? It looks weird. It's not nice to look at. But it's important. I see you for me. I, I can imagine it. Thirdly, the results of rejuvenation. I was reading a story about a young man who was in the desert or the forest. He was... Uh, so he, at one time he was in front of the big river and he knew it was very dangerous to cross that river. So what he did, he, 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 he had a lot of... Um, he decided to make a boat. He was busy for that for days. And finally, he had a boat. And so he went across the river with that boat. Once across, he decided to carry the boat with him. So he took that boat through the, through the forest. And he was looking for an area where people live. Days passed. And every time he carried a boat with him. And he became weaker and weaker. He didn't have power in his life anymore. And one moment, the story tells us of weeks going through the desert, uh, going through the forest. He actually passed with the boat next to him. When I was listening to that story, this is the image how it is in our own lives as a Christian. Something helped us, just like the young boy. This boat was his... Uh, uh, saved him to cross the river, but now he couldn't let go of that boat anymore because he thought by himself, imagine yourself, I need that boat later. And he put all of his energy and power in carrying that boat through that desert, through that forest. But he had to let go of it. And with, uh, and with all of his, um, with all of his expertise, he could have just created a new boat. And what I'm trying to say is that sometimes in life, as a Christian, there are times that we need to let go of things and, and need to long again, desire again for new things. Sometimes we're stuck to things because we're afraid to let go. You know, we have God. We have Christ. The question is, how big is your God? We have Christ who can do it in our lives. But it's so important that we dare, especially when God instructs us to let go, that we truly let go. The Bible says, let go and you will be let go of. And sometimes we have problems, and but this follows you, and this is talk to my life. No, we keep, hold on to things. And, some t and we have later we have an appeal an altar call and it's important that if you have things that you have to let go of then let them go at the altar rise and you know sometimes as children of God 
We can go to, through a very difficult process, a time of confusion, difficulty, resistance, disappointment. And our vision is not as sharp anymore, and we have some kind of uh, restlessness in our heart. And the Bible says in Psalms 32, verse 5, so here is David, and he speaks to his soul, and he says, And he says, basically, to a soul that why you're such in distress. So here's David. He speaks to to himself. He speaks to him, his soul. He says, "Soul, rise. Why do you bow? So why is there such distress? Let us rise and worship God. And that helps extremely." So sometimes we wake up. Not sure if you have been through that, but we wake up, and all of a sudden, it's like a depression comes upon us. I'm not sure where 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 it's from, and you think by yourself, "What is that?" And we can analyze that, and we can we're gonna look at why is this, why is how is that? But sometimes we need to we need to say, "It's there. I don't understand." I cannot, we're gonna, but we're going to worship God. And when you do that, often it disappears as snow for sun. It's so important that we do that. I know that the, the times I'm speaking about, the time of renewance, it means that sometimes we need to wait and have patience in our lives. And Psalmist, he knew that the uh, time of waiting would hurt, but he also knew that it was worth it. And that's why he spoke to his own soul. Other scripture says, Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31. The Bible says, he gives power to the weak, and those who have no might increases strength. Even a youth shall faint and be weary, and a young man shall utterly fail. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And that's a great promise that God speaks to all of us. And you need to say, I'm going for this. I'm Psalm 103, verse 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Who satisfy your mind with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And the time you get older, you will realize that some parts, they don't work in your life as good anymore. That's how it works. But the great thing about everything is that I get older, And some people say, you need to color your hair, and I don't really care about that. My wife thinks it's sexy, and that's what counts. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make, your spirit, uh, your spirit is renewed every day. Your body can shake from time to time, and it doesn't want, it doesn't, Go the way you want it to, but your spirit is renewed. I still, every time, I, I like an adventure, adventure with Christ. And you know, that's the re re renewing process God speaks about. That's the rejuvenation God speaks about. Because all spiritually, we get old. But spiritually, that's what it is all about. And every time we get renewed. So this is the image we need to grasp this morning. That God brings renewance. That God brings refreshment. That God renews. But it's so important that we do it in the right way. That we respond on God's word. That we don't have shame. Go, let go of that pride. Say, God, here am I. This is who I am. Help me. What will people think of me? What will they say? 
doesn't matter. The most important thing is what Christ thinks about you, what He says about you. You know what the greatest thing is that they look at God and He, he looks at His throne and He looks at our lives. And there's a smile on His face, a smile on the way we live our lives as Christian. And if I look at my children, and as a parent, you have that. That you can think and say to your children, and you're so proud. proud you're so proud. And say, wow. And we didn't do it so bad. And that's how God feels. If we obey Him, when we do His will, and when we're open for the guidance He brings to our lives, we all need renewance in our life. There are new flights and new horizons who are waiting for that are waiting for us. Ask him what the things are that needs to be pulled out of our lives. Sometimes it's painful, but ask him what are those things that you need to pull out of your life, let go of, so that there is a renewance in your life, so you can start flying again high in a mountain and experience the power of God in your personal life. Too many Christians, they live in defeat because the devil lies to, to us. We need to live in victory. We need to be prepared to pay the price. Jesus knew what the price was that was waiting for him. And we know that we can read that in the Word. But he was prepared to go through that. He was prepared to pay the price. You know why? Because he could see after the cross. And he could see you and I and all the millions of people who are, God, who are serving God. That gave him the power to go, to go further. And you need to be prepared to pay the price. Last scripture, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. The Bible, the Bible says, Watch, stand fast in faith, be brave, be strong. That's the thing I want to close with. Watch. Stand fast in faith. Be brave. And be strong. That's the thing God wants. He wants to do in our lives, accomplish in our personal life. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes for a moment of time this morning. Father, my God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, God, for your love and your power. And I thank you that you speak and minister to our lives. Say, Lord, help us. Help us to, to dare to look at our own soul, to dare to look at our own heart. Holy Spirit, at this moment, I pray that you move, go your way in hearts. Look in every angle in our heart and reveal a thing that speaks and that yet plays out in our life and resists us for our destiny. God, we thank you for everything this morning. In Jesus' name. If every hack is bowed, every eye is closed. We spoke about the necessity of rejuvenation. I use the image of the eagle. I've used the image of cars where their maintenance was there, APK needed to be happen, how necessary it was. And also in our spiritual life, we need that. We need that there is a maintenance there. We need that there, when the signals are there, present in our life, that we respond. God, that he deals with it because he has the best for us he has the best purposes for us and this morning God speaks to your life 
and you're in this uh, room, maybe you're at home, and God is dealing with your personal life. And my question, my challenge is, are you willing to open your heart? Are you? Da I dare you to look at yourself and look at your current state of your spiritual life and say, Lord, I need you. I need rejuvenation. I need a renewance. I need change. There's, I need maintenance. And this morning, God is speaking with you, dealing with your life. And maybe you're here, maybe you're at home and God spoke to your life. And you want to give your life. And you say, God, I want to follow you. I want to give my life. I want to give my soul. My soul, I want to give everything to you. And this morning, uh, if you want this, I want to pray a prayer with you. I want to believe that God is going to do a miracle in the midst of you. I believe for change, believe for renewance, believe, believe for a future that is going to make a way upon your life. So if you're here this morning and you want to give your life to Christ or you're at home and you want to do that, I want to challenge you. I want to uh, invite you friendly to raise your hand. If you're here, here in this, in this you want to give your life to Christ. You've never done that before. But you want to do that. Let me show you your hand for a moment of time. It will be a privilege to pray with you. Raise your hand. Let me show me your hand. I see that hand. Thank you for the, that hand. God is here. Are there more people you want to give your life? Show me your hand. I'm not doing this to shame people. I'm doing this so that I know that God is a great God. And I know that God has a great plan with you. The last time, if you're here, and raise your hand in Jesus' name. I want to pray with you. Or maybe you, you have made that decision before. But you're backsliding. One way or another, the circumstances, they pulled you away from God. But this morning, you want to come back and say, God, here am I. You know, he's, he was hanging on the cross with open arms. And after the cross, now, today, he's still with open arms waiting on you that you come to him. And if you're here, you want to do that. That honest heart. Uh, you want to give your life. You want to come back to Christ. Experience what it means to be a child of God. Joy, peace. If that's you, then raise your hand. In Jesus' name. At home, respond as well. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray a prayer for the people who have raised their hands. Someone was raising their oh, has raised their hand. Can you look at me for a short moment? In Jesus' name. And you mean this? Come, simply come forward. Come simply forward. Someone come, is coming with you. I need a sister. Don't be ashamed. And this woman is going to pray with you. I'm going to pray for you as well. I'm going to believe that God is going to use you. And for the people, maybe you want to give your life to Christ. Then I want to pray a prayer. So pray after me. Let us believe God. For the people at home, we want to give your life. In Jesus' name. Father, my God, I thank you for salvation. I believe in your Son, Christ. I believe you died for me on the cross. Cleanse my heart. Forgive me all of my sin. And give me the power of your Holy Spirit to stay in your path. I thank you for everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you're at home and you pray this prayer, it's great that it's so powerful you've done that. And I want to challenge you that just app someone, call, mail, doesn't matter what. 
let it know. Pastor, people in this church, they want to help you. So make sure you let us know and give us feedback and that God has done a mouth for a powerful word. People are ready to help you in your relationship with God. I want to open the altar. And we spoke about rejuvenation, renewance. And I want to open the altar. And if you're at home, find a place and seek, and seek God. And let God do a miracle in your personal life. Let me stand. Let us stand. We're going to sing a song. And God is here to help us. It's so important that we deal with Christ. When God speaks to our life, when God reveals, then it's so important. I say, God, this is my problem. Lord, help me. This is the thing I deal with in my personal life. This is the thing that de is dealing in my life. Bring renewance, bring a refreshment. God, help us. And let us seek God with everything what's in us. And pour out your heart. He's here to help us. Holy Spirit, I pray you in this moment. Deal with lives. Speak to hearts.
We serve a powerful God. It's worth it to give your life to Christ. I will tell you, you won't be disappointed in Christ. Some people, they are disappointed by people, but and they blame God. But Christ, throughout the years, 32 years, has never disappointed us. He was always there for us. Before I close, I promise that I'm going to pray for you. I'm not going to lay your hands upon you. If you can simply come in the hall, then I'm going to pray for you. Great uh, promise you made. You're going to pray that God is going to strengthen you. He's going to renew you because God knows where you come from. He knows the struggles. He knows the struggles. He knows the thoughts. He knows the feelings and our heart and everything are safest in his hands. And God is going to do for you. I'm going to pray for you. Father, at this moment, I, I pray for the sister. I pray, God, that you touch her, that you bring revelations on her life, that you bring renewance. I pray, Father, that my God, that you seal the decision she has made this, this, this day that you do a miracle in her life and change, that you refill yourself to her. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you do a work in her midst, renewance, refreshment. My God, I thank you for the thing you're doing on this moment. And I, I thank you, I pray, do the work that you started in her life. And I thank you. And I give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. This is only the start, the start of something great that God is going to do. True. God is going to do it in your life. Thank you that I could pray for you. Before I close, this morning, maybe you're here, you need prayer. I'm not going to lay my hands upon you. You're going to pray. Jesus pray prayed for people. And on the other, another side, they were healed. And that's the power of healing. There's no limitation. That's the thing I want to do. We're going to pray. If you want to pray with me, pray after me. Maybe you're at home. You want to pray. You struggle with things. You struggle with things. And we're going to pray that God helps you. If you want to pray with me, maybe at home going to believe that God is going to touch you. Say, Father, I believe this morning that you want to help me. I come with all my struggles before your throne. My feelings, my emotions, my thoughts, I claim the blood of Christ upon these things. And I pray you, Father, that you make me free. You set me free me courage to truly look at my heart to deal with my heart to deal with the things that don't belong in my life to let go of things and I pray you Father that you strengthen me that you renew me that every rejuvenation process starts and I thank you for everything you do in my life. And I, I look forward to the thing you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship God one more time. And God is here in our midst. And I believe for sure that the moment we realize who we are in God, 
the devil will flee. We need to realize, and that's the problem, the lie. The biggest lie is that we believe the thing that the Bible says about us. And of course, we all have shortcomings. We all have things that can be improved in our lives. God knows it. And still, He knows us. He loves us. And still, He wants to use us in His kingdom. And still, He has a destiny and a plan for our lives. So let us rise and say, no, we don't do it anymore. We're not going to believe the lies. We're going to believe the thing that God says upon us. Not what the brothers and sisters say, because sometimes, oh, that happens as well. You're limited. We saw that. That we are limited by brothers and sisters in life. I love you, brothers and sisters. But this is a fact. If we look at the life of David, David was limited by his own family. Well, his brothers, his own family. But it was God. Why? Because God has always the right thing to say. He decides. And he does it in all of our lives. And that's the great thing. That's the certainty we have. So don't be afraid for what is coming. But embrace it. Walk towards it. Let God do the work. We knew it. We, we need it from time to time. And I know for su- sure that God is going to do the thing. It was a great honor to be here again. Great church. Great people. And and greater God, Jesus is here. Let us close in prayer. In Jesus' name. God, we thank you for your presence, for your love. And pray, Father, this morning that you're going to bless this day. Help us to see your hand in our lives. Lord, give us vision. Sharpen it. Take away that and show us what we need to do. And God, we thank you for your love, your power. And we thank you, Lord, to bless this day and our our conversations in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says amen. Thank you for your time and your attention also at home. Thank you that you were logged in. Hope to see you again. Tonight there's a service again. And come here if the opportunity is is there at six o'clock six o'clock. Hope to see you again. Adios.